it, here's a sort of a, a, a way to describe things. And, and in, a, in an avalanche, each beautiful and unique snowflake pleads not guilty. And I see this all the time among my friends and my colleagues. These are good people who voted for Barack Obama. They listen to NPR in the morning. They read the New York Times. Um, you know, they, they think they're good people, and, and in many ways they are, but um, they don't appreciate that when they fly on airplanes 50,000 miles a year um, and eat lots of meat and whatnot, um, they are guilty. We, we're all guilty if we do these kinds of things. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, uh, um, a population is not discussed in um, the... Uh, in, 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 in this, it doesn't appear in this uh, conversation as, uh, about how we can, things can be approved, as we all know, so I won't uh, belabor that point. Um, and uh, this is a, a, an example of how hard it is to find, even in, the, in books, uh, the mention of the word population. Um, the reason why it's important, in my opinion, to focus on population um, in, certainly in addition to, and even more so than consumption, is because changing people's habits of consuming for reasons that I just outlined two or three slides previously is so slow and, and difficult because people are not going to change their ways. They're not going to stop eating meat. They're not going to stop flying, whether it be on vacations or to visit their, their friends and relatives or attend their daughter's wedding or whatever the reason is. Um, and so we have to try and do something quickly and it's much easier in my opinion to pass laws that would for example limit immigration to the United States um, and all the relevant environmental impacts of that that could be done far more quickly than it than one can change the uh, people's patterns of consumption so it's a question of time scales dealing with the population issue, um, having uh, our laws change to promote small families rather than large families, all these things can be done much more quickly in principle than you can, um, than you can change people's patterns of consumption. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, this is uh, what I, th the, the, the top is what I think needs to be done, but unfortunately the discussion of population is a no-no in just the places where it should be, politics, scientific circles like the AAAS and the mainstream environmental community such as the Sierra Club. Um, by the way, before I get on to my last, I just want to say, you know, I'm almost done here, just one or two more slides. In terms of books, uh, I went to school with a, a back in high school with a fellow named Fred Bagdoff, and he and a collaborator have just come out with a book, What Every Environmentalist Needs to Know About Capitalism, which I read on the way out here. And um, the, uh, it basically says that under capitalism, we're never going to fix these problems. And it's an interesting read. It's very focused on environmental issues and whatnot. Um, and it basically says just by... Um, trying to fix things around the edges and, and you know, drive more energy efficient cars or something. It's just not going to get us there. Capitalism basically with its growth mantra um, is, is the fundamental problem. Um, so what every environmentalist needs to know about capitalism. Okay, so anyway, down here I say that, that, that uh, um, both Albert Einstein and Martin Luther King would um, be concerned that these serious problems that we, we're all concerned about in this room are not being addressed. And here's a quote from Einstein. Those are the privilege to know of the duty to act. And um, I uh, know so many people who know but don't act at all. They're just not willing to be activists. They just go and, you know, do their, their thing um, and just don't deal with these issues, even though I know there's a problem. And uh, Martin Luther King, in this quote from 1963, um, understood that it's for certain issues, gradualism, incrementalism, it just isn't going to get the job done. And though this isn't quite um, what uh, I've been talking about, it's such a wonderful quote from Dr. King that I thought I would just sort of leave it up on the screen. So I'm done. <laughs>
uh, what remind me the name of the piece again, Roy? Um, the the re anyway they describe the re the multi the multi of reasons as to why we've gone backwards over the last 40 years. And it was of order a half a dozen different reasons. It wasn't one. Contribute quite a, quite a few years ago, I used to contribute to the Union of Concerned Scientists, but I stopped when they refused to deal with population issues. I, um, I even had a dialogue in Santa Monica, California at a restaurant with their executive director trying to, to get them to do something. Uh, we had dinner together or something and a couple other UCS uh, supporters at that time trying to get them to do something and nothing happened. And But I can't tell you the reasons. I suspect it has to do with funding, but I don't know. Okay. Um, by the way, the Environmental Defense uh, Fund. Now it used to be called Environmental Defense Fund. Now it's called Environmental Defense. They had so little interest in population that uh, they uh, that they didn't even have a population subsection. And uh, an atmospheric chemist was sort of the nominal head of their population concerns. And I spoke to him because I knew knew him. His, his he was an open borders type. For example, this was the head of their um, of of their population committee. What every environmentalist needs to know about capitalism, it's by Fred Magdoff. One problem with my presentation today is I had to get uh, Jessica uh, the, the presentation a day or two ahead, so I couldn't, so I was wanted to put this in on, the name on, on a slide, but it was too late. Jo Fred Magdoff, M-A-G-D-O-F-F, -F, and John Bellamy Forster, what every environmentalist needs to know about capitalism. It just came out a few weeks ago, actually. Uh, I guess the, the question is, um, how much faith do I have in the future generation being able to lead us down the the right path rather than the wrong path. And, uh, I mean, people say that, you know, there's always the next Einstein or, or Martin Luther King coming along, but frankly, I think that uh, such good or intelligent people are, are totally overwhelmed by our sheer numbers, and, and I, I just don't think that um, uh, uh, even a very, it, I think it becomes less and less likely that um, uh, talented individuals can stop this train wreck we're on. This the amount of inertia associated with seven billion on the way to ten billion people um, over consuming the Earth's resources is just beyond any anybody's ability to stop it. And that's why I personally believe it's going to be at least one catastrophe and probably multiple catastrophes before human beings finally see the light. I mean, people talk about September 11th, 2001 as some kind of a you know horror, disaster, or catastrophe. It's going to—it's nothing. It's going to be hundreds and thousands of times worse than that. <laughs> um, those are good questions. Uh, what what role can technology play? Well, it can certainly play some role, and um, I uh, have have done my best uh, 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 to. Uh, to use it when when uh, available. So we've had solar. My wife and I have had photovoltaic panels on the house of our uh, the roof of our house for nine years now, and we got an electric car a few months ago, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I just don't think that personally that that making all these changes, albeit necessary, getting off of fossil fuels. Um, will in themselves do the trick because there are so many impacts that human beings have, um, so just a myriad of impacts that um, as their population increases and tops out 10 billion or something, uh, the, the, the tech, uh, techno fix just isn't going to, to work. Now in terms of what, what might replace capitalism, um, this this book suggests some form of socialism, and even a number of times quotes Albert Einstein's famous 1949 Why Socialism article um, in uh, the Monthly Review, and uh, um, you can decide for yourself whether or not socialism um, can, uh, can 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 do the trick. I'm not even sure it can do it can do what needs to be done. It's they don't you know it's very difficult. Um, Human beings are just so overwhelming the biosphere now to know whether we can... Basically, the most important thing to do is to cut back to a billion people or less. And then I think that uh, it might be something, you know, the situation might be manageable. But until we, we get down to those kind of numbers, I don't think anything is going to really help too much.